Hello, my name is Marian Penna from Seems to Be So, and today I'm going to show you how to make the caterpillar block that I am making for Bee's EQ Applicade Animals Blog Hop. The first on the schedule is um, my summer animal, which I'm doing a caterpillar. So I have opened EQ, I've got my tip of the day. And now I get my project screen, and you should get this every single time you open Electric Quilt, whether you're going to open a project or create a project or start with a quilt project. I'm going to create a new project, so I will type in my name, <clears throat> excuse me, and I will click OK. And I want to be sure I'm on the block I'm working on the block icon and I'm going to bring in my image which is a caterpillar. I'm using the white background. Um, I'm using a JPEG file and um, I don't need to make really any corrections here. I also don't really care for this because you can't see the changes when you're here. You have to wait and see what it did um, when you click OK. Now I, I don't know if um, that's, um, I haven't really played around a lot with this, but I do know that if I need to I can crop this down a little bit more. I don't really need to do that, but um, you can crop it if you like. And um, then you want to click anywhere and it will set your image in. And this is really where you can tell what it's going to do as far as the lightness goes or if you want a heavier appearance. It's totally up to you, but I'm actually fine with where it was. So now that I have the image in place, there's not much else more I can do here. I'm not going to be taking pieces apart, so I don't really need to scooch up the positioning on the image, but you could certainly do that if you wanted to as well. I don't need the piece to tab because I'm making an applique, so I'm going to come over here to the applique tab. The first thing I need to do is determine my order in which I'm going to stitch out. I like to think about this, and um, having a machine embroidery background, you learn real quickly that order is extremely important in how things stitch out. So <clears throat> because this is an app applique, we're going to have things that are underneath fabric and um, we need to think about um, how we're going to draw that. I could tell you that you really don't have to think about it because there are options as well. Like if you forget and you draw something out of order, you can go back and, and hit the send to front or send to back um, on the menu or, or the icons. I, I don't think there are any icons for it. I'm not real sure. But um, so it's not like you can't, you're not allowed to make a mistake and go and fix it. Electric Quilt gives you that opportunity to do so. So we're going, I know that the feet and the legs are going to be stitched out first because the feet are underneath the body of the caterpillar. So I know that these are going to be done first. Then the next one is the part of the body. This one, this oval here is going to be stitched out first because it gets both sides and every the rest of the body kind of follows it. So this is going to be our first stitch out part. This one will be second, third, and fourth. Now we could make this second, but it doesn't really make a whole lot of sense to me to come over here and then come over here. I would, uh, to me, it's just easier to go ahead and get these done. So I'm just going to put these as two, three, and four, and then this one, and um, that way I basically know my order. And when I know my order, I can work in that order. If you, do, if you just kind of jump in, you really don't know your order, that's where you're going to be fixing mistakes later to um, get them to stitch out in the proper order. Okay, so the next thing we need to do is determine our drawing tools. I am a new electric quilt um, 
person. I, I have owned Electric Quilt for years and years, but I never really took the time to learn it. I just kind of um, opened it, pulled my block, printed it out, and stitched it out. And that was really it. That's all I ever really used it for. So I have never really taken the time to learn it properly. But now I, I um, have come back to quilting after several years of being away from it, and I want to to take the time and learn the software. After all, we've all paid a great deal of money to learn or to, to pay for this software, and my opinion is that you should really learn as much as you can, or to the point where you're feeling comfortable with the software. Because what if you want to take and edit a block or that kind of or add something to it down the road? If you don't know how to do those things, then you're hunting around the web or looking through books to try and find out how you do that. If you learn how to do it, then it just comes naturally. And, and actually, I think you get more creative when you learn how to use and be able to edit and add and delete and those kind of things from the block or the applique or whatever it is you're working on in the software. So <clears throat> for me, um, because I, I can honestly tell you I'm not experienced. I've probably drawn this caterpillar 50 times just trying to get it right and learning the software. But um, I finally have some semblance and can go through it pretty quickly. So you want to, I'm going to use the square in this flyout menu. To get this to the flyout to show up, you just press and hold on the icon in the toolbar and then you can come over here to the square and click on it. I'm going to zoom in to the area I want to work on and then I'm going to just draw a, a square. I'm sure you can see this just fine. I hope you can anyway. And um, I know that this is pretty large and um, <coughs> Excuse me. Um, I've, I've made it large on purpose so that you can see what I'm doing. Now that I've made this square, I know that it's going to auto fill in, but I want to force um, you to see if you don't have auto fill turned on. And when you're tracing an image, you shouldn't have it on. Um, all of the time because you need to be able to see your image and as you can see it it fills in with a cream colored appearance you can change the coloring of that if you don't like it but it's fine for me on this project so um, if I were working on something lighter I probably would so now I want to edit this block and make it to fit in this size so I'm going to come over here to the shape icon and then I have to click on the line and I can, as you see, you can see, just move this straight into place. It's very simple. Okay, so then I click outside of it once I have it in place. I want to come to the pick icon and select this again. Then I'm going to come up here and clone about 10 of these. Not really, but you'll see what I mean. I'm going to just kind of slightly move them into place to select them you just have to click on the line and then I'm going to just give them another edit and you just have to click on the line and move your in the little nodes so that they fit the way you want them to To me this is very fast and easy. The ability to clone it makes it so much easier. I'm just going to move this up a little bit. Even though it really doesn't matter because um, if I had, when I stitch this out, I'm not going to be worrying about these ends anyway. I just am most likely going to cut them off. So now I'm going to come back to my 
pick tool and I'm just going to continue to clone and edit and I will come back to you when I have the rest of those finished. Okay, so I have now finished all of the little legs and I'm going to um, do the one thing I never remember to do and that is add to my Ooh. sketchbook. And as you can see, it will have added my little legs. Um, I'm very bad at remembering to add to the sketchbook. I'm, it's easier for me to remember to save, and I do that as well. Um, I, I am well known for getting it myself into a position where I don't quite know what to do next, and because I can't figure out why it won't undo, or that kind of thing, I will take and reopen the project. So um, it's easier for me to remember to save than it is to add to sketchbook because all, almost all software you work in does not have an add to sketchbook. Instead, it has a auto save feature or a, you know, the ability to just click and save. So um, that's where I stand for the most part with those kind of things. And I've run into I've, I'm learning that you need to add to the sketchbook as well. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is the feet. This is just a simple oval shape, so I'm going to hold down my heart. I'm going to come to the oval. And the nice thing about this is that it remembers what you worked on, so that you don't have to continue to click to get the flyout menu unless you're going to change your shape. Um, i try this again. There's my oval. It does seem a little big, and that's okay. We're just going to, um, we can resize it down here as well. We're just going to move it into place and resize it. Okay, so once it's done, you can take and clone it again and just set it into shape. I'm going to clone this several times and just kind of move them into place. I need to hit my pick tool. I'll come up and do this so that you can see better. Once they are done, we will move on to the next area. And I will be back after I get the rest of them shaped. Or, I will be back after I put the rest of them in place. Okay, I now have them all back in place again. And I'm just going to quickly give you, show you that and show that they are filled in. And um, when you want the auto, when you want to see the icon for the autofill, you have to click one of these four icons. It won't work if you click these two. I'm um, not sure if it gives it with it. It does show with your shapes as well. So it will show you here that it's filled in. You can come over here and see them as well on your color tab. And I'm going to turn those off. And I'm going to hit Add to Sketchbook. And as you can see, it's going to have added a second one to our um, sketchbook. And that's going to show with our little feet in place. Okay. And this just, it's helpful if you do have to come back and reopen your project. After even, you know, say your computer crashes or your internet goes offline or... Windows wants you to reboot after an update kind of thing. We're now going to start on the body of our caterpillar. And um, there are two ways that I have learned to do this. In the first caterpillars I made, I used the oval shapes and reshaped them. But I quickly found I became annoyed at having to deal with shaping the circular part in here where you have 
where you're really not going to have any fabric anyway, but you have to have something there that will allow you to shape them in the first place. So I started um, playing with some of the other tools and I found that I really liked the Bazaar Curve better. So I'm going to show you both, but with this harder one, to me this is harder, I'm going to show you with the Bazaar Curve so you can see a bit better how it just works out in the long run. So I'm going to click on this and the thing you need to remember about working with the non-shaped tools, these right in here, is that the, the they need to be closed. It's very easy to end up not having a node not be closed and I'm going to purposely show you that um, how that can happen and try to show you how to find it when it does happen. So um, it could very well be that I shape this and not get that to happen in the first place as well. And that happened to me yesterday when I made the video and I thought I really should have shown how to um, find it when it doesn't close. So I'm purposely going to do that today and that's why I'm remaking this video. So you really try to work outside of the area or work inside, just inside trying to shape your curve. You want to stop and start a lot as well because um, you're going to have, whether you use the oval shape or the bazaar, you're still going to add quite a few nodes. So the cool part about using the bazaar cur curve tool or any of these drawn tools is that you have control over where you place your nodes. So when you get into places like here where you know you're going to need a node exactly right here, it is much easier to be able to do that than if you have the oval shape where you're not going to have that choice. You've got to try and work a node in there. And I, I don't know yet if there's a way to specifically add a node in a certain spot or not. Um, it's possible there is, but I do not know how to do that yet. So um, you just, if you have to stop and start like I have here and you put your mouse somewhere, you just try and get back by clicking on the last one you were at. I believe there is a snap to node feature in the options as well and you could certainly set it so that it automatically does that and I might give that a try sometime if I do then I'll I'll just do another lesson on it. But like I say you just kind of want to shape it as best you can outside so that or in or just inside. I don't do this on the black because I can't see the black line on the black image color so um, I'm not doing that. I'm going to quickly see if I'm filled and I'm filled and I goofed that up so I'm going to see if I can. Yes I can. So let's say I don't get this filled okay and um, what will happen is you won't see the cream color fill in like you would down here. So you can either um, when you're looking for it obviously it's not going to be as obvious as this is but you can take and you can undo if if it just happens to be the last one you came up to. I'll try and get real close here. I don't think that's built in. Oh, it is. Darn it. Um, when I was doing this the other day, I had two spots that didn't get filled in. And the nodes were like almost on top of each other. And so I literally had to take each node apart to try and find them. And and you may end up having to do that as well. But to me it's more worth the time, it's still more worth the time because like I said you have better control over being able to reshape and that kind of thing later. And what I'm going to do now is shape this into place. So to shape you're just working between the nodes and this is where 
it was important about placing those nodes because you have control over them. When we when I show you how to do it with the oval, you'll see that you don't have as much control until you start adding more nodes. And it's very difficult sometimes to get the nodes where you want them to place in the positioning. So that's why I, I prefer this method uh, because even though I risk not being able to get it auto-filled, I still will do better just because I have better control over the shapes. The other thing you can do is um, you may need to add a node somewhere. You want to come over to the little pick or the shape icon toolbars and there's a little red square dot and if you just click on those they'll bring up um, edit windows or add windows so that you can add or join delete break you can edit your lines in other words or you can add nodes on the pick tool it has rotate and clone flips and um, it makes it a lot easier when you have to do those things. We're going to use that tool a little bit later. But for now, I need this one. So I'm going to add a node in here because I can't seem to get this to shape well. Sometimes I like to move the nodes around. I do get, I will say, I do get a little bit picky about this kind of thing. So um, I like my shapes to be close to perfect, if not perfect. So I get a little picky about that and I apologize. It's just my nature. You can use these to help you shape with the little, um, I don't know what they're called offhand, but they will certainly help you to um, get these into shape as well. I prefer working in the middle um, just because I find it easier to shape, especially when you're on a curve you want to be able to get that shape in place. You don't need to have a lot of room out here. Um, in other words, it doesn't need to be this wide out because you're really most likely going to cut this fabric anyway because you don't need to stitch it. If you stitch it, um, you just have the thickness of that in there. If you have just cut it off, then it won't feel, um, um, what is the word I'm looking for? Lump, um, um, I'll say lumpy, but really thickness is what I'm after here. Is when it's thick, because it w if it were machine applique, for instance, you'd have the bulk of the zigzag stitch if you stitch down there and I hope you wouldn't. I hope the designer wouldn't make you do that either. Um, but really uh, it's and it's hard to say this but I would rather just have a little stitch down here so it's at least holding down and then I can bring my scissors in and just cut really close to the stitching line and that way when I do this outer edge and I stitch it then it's not gonna the fabric's not gonna fold over either. It's stitched down so it's in place and you can stitch this down quite nicely and it's the same effect with hand stitching if you've even put a hand stitch down this line or down this line when you come to do this one it's stitched down so it's it's kind of like basting it holds it in place while you stitch over the other side okay so that's pretty much it I'm gonna leave this be because it's it's okay and I've already made my caterpillar so I'm happy with that one. So the next one I'm going to show you is how to do the oval shape tool. And this is the one um, where you don't have as much control. I'm sorry, I, I want a better um, zoom here. You're going to take your oval shape and click on it. And we're going to just draw a great big oval and try and work that in as best we can. 
you're going to get these big uh, handles. I think that's what people call them. You're going to get these big handles. And so the thing I need to tell you about handles is when you're working with the handles, if, say, you need, um, when we start adding new um, nodes, you'll want to click in the area where you're needing that node. So if I need the node in the upper area, I'll want to click on an area in the upper area. If I'm going to add it, want to do it down here, then I'm going to need to click down here so that the handles will turn in their shaping. It doesn't matter which way I work this, I need to add handles so that I can shape this section over here. So I'm pretty happy with where the node is here, but um, what I'm not liking is that I have all of this over here. So I'm going to have to work up here to bring a node as close as I can to this edge over here. So I know I'm just going to need another node. And so I'm going to click it here, and then I'm going to click between these two so that I can get a node. And then I'm going to click here so I can get a node here. And I can kind of shape this node in. And then I can start bringing these over here. When you're work when you I didn't bring an extra note over here because to me I could shape this and then just kind of reshape this area and it's fine but now I need to come between these two and add a node so that I can shape here and then I'm going to just quickly add another node in here so that I can shape it I don't like that this has such a big curly cube but I can't see adding more nodes especially when I have a lot of control over um, how much of an area I'm going to cut down anyway. So the more nodes you add, the harder it is to work with. So while you can take and do something there, you don't really have to because you know you're just covering this anyway and you can stitch out. Your stitching is going to start here and you're going to just come around this edge and stitch to here. So once you stop, then you can just take um, and stitch across with a straight stitch here so that it's you're covering this area. Um, I guess I really should learn how to do that here, but at the same time, you're stopping so you basically know you can just turn your machine to a, a straight stitch and come across this area and, and I'm my guess is that a template would have this marked anyway so I'm hoping so anyway when I I stitched it out I didn't have any problem but if you haven't ever done applique you may not realize you need to do that okay so I'm as you can see it it went okay with this shape but um, it is a lot more work and you don't get really this shaping that you want in here so it really is up to you and how you like to do things I'm going to finish these other two parts of the body and then I'll come back to do the face we're going to add to our sketchbook because I don't want to forget to do that and so I want to be able to show you those parts okay so I will be back in a few minutes Okay, so I have now finished the entire body and here, as you can see, all I did on this last one was just put it, use an oval. And I shaped it a little bit with uh, handles and now I am ready to come over here and do the head. So I want to talk to you about um, the little antlers. I guess that's what we can call them. They're not antlers, but maybe curly cues or whatever you want to call them. Um, if I were in machine, if I were doing this in digitizing software, I would just 
make these so that they stitched out a zigzag stitch coming across the top of the head but I'm not doing that so um, I am going to just take and make little lines and when I go to my sewing machine I zigzagged these just following the line of the curlicues so I'm going to show you um, how I did that I used the berserk curve again and I came up here and I started at the curve it's not important to worry about an autofill on this one because I'm not closing these out here and I've come over here just so that I can continue on and then I'm just going to edit them. Now the other thing you could do if you wanted is you could just take and if you didn't want to do this here you could just make your curly cues and end it here then come over and deselect, um, get this all shaped and ready to go in place and you could then flip this and or clone and then flip it and place it over here um, to me it's just easier I, I'm so used to doing this in digitizing software that I it's kind of habit so I apologize that I didn't do that but I want to make sure to at least tell you that little tip Okay, so there it is in, all in place and I'm just going to quickly show you what I mean here. As you could just take this and and then after you edit it to get it all nice and pretty you would just go to your pick tool, highlight this, clone it and then flip it. And you could just move it over here and then you as you can see you have it all done and ready to go I'm just gonna delete those real quick so I don't need them in place I'm going to hit my add to sketch I'm going to save and then I'm going to come down here and I'm going to make my big face now and actually I'm just going to come over here to my big guy over here and I'm going to clone him and I'm just going to bring him over here because I'm lazy like that and I'm going to shape him and then I'll come back and make sure he's in good shape the other thing I want to be sure to emphasize here is that you want to be sure you are getting your, your all your bases covered with your overlaps because it's really important that this is going to overlap on here. If you see that you may have an area where it's not, you can go back and fix that quite easily and I would encourage you to do that right then and there. I just kind of want to play with this a little bit, get that into good shape, make sure all my other lines are in place, and the other thing I want to um, talk to you about is the if you had something that wasn't, um, that you didn't, oh, draw in order. If let's say this this piece here was um, done last okay and you shaped it just right now if you come over here to your color you're gonna see that it it's on the top 
and you'll want to change that. So to do that, you're going to use your highlight. You're going to use your pick tool and then you're going to highlight the section and you're going to send it to the back. And that will fix that problem just like that. Ooh, look, I messed up my feet too. So I have to go and do that as well. Send it back, send it back, and that should fix those, okay? So there you go with that. Now I just have to do the eyes and the cheeks, and I would encourage you to have some fun with the cheeks because um, I don't think you can get a great coloring with the cheeks otherwise, and that's my husband. I'll be right back. Okay, so... Um, I would encourage you maybe to use some buttons or try a uh, decorative stitch. The, um, some, some of the fun decorative stitches are taking some swirlies or some zigzags and just kind of going around in a circle with them and you can come up with a fun shape for cheeks. So um, essentially speaking, what I did here is I took and I highlighted my little foot and I cloned him. <laughs> I love the clone tool. And I, because he's really basically the same thing, and you just kind of give it a little shapey. I'm kind of also thinking it would kind of be fun just even to put some white in the eye because if you look when we put the colors in you can see that um, while they show up they you know don't show up really great but I'm gonna give you the cheeks here as well and this gives you a little idea of what to do with them the other thing is you could add a little smiley but that's really something you can do with your machine. I would encourage you to do it with your machine, actually. So now we're going to come and we're going to give him some colors. So I'm going to find my green. If you like this one, maybe we will have just a little bit of fun here. Then we'll make his in a different color. And we'll make his legs in the other color. Oops! I should be close up for this, but what the heck. Glutton for punishment, I guess. I did not save or add the sketchbook, and I should have. So I'll do that now. And um, now I want my black. This is kind of a purple and then a black. But the eyes are so small, you're really just going to see black. And pink is hard to come up with because you're like, okay, what should I do with that? Boy, that looks gray, doesn't it? And that's definitely a pink. So we'll just do that instead. Okay, so here we have our caterpillar all done and ready to be printed out for the templates and stitched out. Now, I would love to see what you come up with with the caterpillar. I think he's a darling little animal, a summer animal. And I want to mention real quick that I did get the image at the graphics shop. It is a membership club on the web. I think it's thegraphicsshopclub.com, if I remember right. They have some really cute stuff, and they offer a lifetime membership. I have no affiliation with them other than I'm a member. And um, all of the images I used, by the way, were in a summer pack from the graphic shop. So we'll be seeing more of those um, in the days to come. So I hope you've enjoyed this lesson and I will be back with you um, tomorrow. I believe it's Wednesday. Um, although I'm making this video early, I will be back tomorrow with a new lesson and a new blog. 
have a great day and enjoy your caterpillar.